Hey there, how's everybody doing? In a world where Blu-ray still reigns supreme, there's still a lot of stores that sell cheap DVDs, and that's what I did. I hit the big lot sale this past weekend, 20% off the whole weekend. I hit a couple big lot stores actually, about two I went to. Got a big old discount off both purchases, and I came home with a big old stack of crap. And what I'm going to do in true DVD update format, I'm going to run them off here, tell you what they are, where they're at. Actually, I've already told you that. They're big lots. Basically, just so give you the intel, if you guys want these titles, maybe search around your different uh, big lots in your towns or towns nearby, and they might just have these. But as always, remember, big lots is total randomness. Sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't. So search around a little bit. Don't hold me to it. You know, they're not at every single store. I got what I consider some decent titles and or some ones that I just wanted to try. There are a few in here that I haven't viewed before. Let's get right into it. I got one of these uh, eight films to die for. I don't have a whole lot of these. In fact, I think this is my first one in the collection. This is The Deaths of Ian Stone. Let's see. The light is better right there. Yeah, there. Look, check it out. It's got a slip cover with it. Um... I have no idea what this film is about. Uh, comment below if you like it or don't like it. Tell me why. I don't know if I've heard good things about it and I've heard bad things about it. But it was three bucks. Hock on. Here is from my childhood, guys. A cartoon. It's a volume one, 32 cartoons, four discs, three bucks. The Silver Hawks. I mean, it's the Silver Hawks. Back in the day when you had Transformers, G.I. Joe, and or Thundercats, all that stuff was on. I was plopped in front of the TV after school every day, which is probably why I didn't finish all my homework on time. Darn cartoons. Here's one that I already I already opened a couple of these because I was curious or I've watched them since the weekend. But uh, River's Edge, this movie I've been looking for, a good price on it for a while. I have a feeling that this might be out of print now. Don't quote me on that. This movie was not as good as I remember it. I mean, it did. I don't think it held up over time as well as I. It, it's just not as good as I remember it. But it does have a main redeeming feature. Having this one in your collection for Crispin Glover's performance in the film is worth the price of admission. You got to see this at least once for his really on the edge, just really weird performance in this movie. I mean, if you thought the dance moves in Friday Four were weird for Crispin Glover. This is a whole 90 minutes worth of that. So, anyway, check that one out. Get them while the getting's good. In fact, this one I went back uh, the second or third day of the sale. They had about 10 copies of this that won the big lots. And I went in, the I think, the day after I was in there uh, to see what else was available. These were all sold out. So, River's Edge is going fast. Wherever, you're, wherever you see these, I'd pick it up. Here is one that I was very surprised at. It's an old Robert Carradine movie. You know, it was Lewis from the Revenge of the Nerds. It has a very early performance from Melanie Griffith in it. It's called Joyride. It's kind of like a like a road trip type movie. Road trip, uh, drive-in style movie. Uh, slash uh, heist. They try to pull off a, a burglary in the movie too. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but then again, a lot of those old drive-in favorites didn't make a whole lot of sense. That's what I like about it. Good atmosphere, just good laid-back fun there. Here's one I haven't seen in a long time, Eric the Viking. This is the director's son's cut. I have no idea what that's about, so drop me a comment below. Let me know what it's all about. Um, I'm always down with the uh, Monty Python comedy and or Monty Python backed projects like this one, Time Bandits, all those. So Eric the Viking should... Should be pretty fun. I got the Blu-ray of the third one in this series. But I thought, well, I need to be a completist. This was three bucks. It's uh, Lost Boys to Tribe. It's the second movie, I think. I've watched this one before. I didn't think this one was too awfully bad. The third one, I could barely get through. This one, I'm going to revisit. I remember this one having decent effects, practical parts of it. Um, and a, an appearance by, of course, Corey Feldman. I think the beginning opening scenes has Tom Savini as a vampire, too. So, well, it's a good little, good little romp. Here's one I watched last night. And this one is actually better now that I've gotten older. I don't know why, but it is. I just enjoyed it all the more. It is Cocoon, Ron Howard's movie. Sorry, Brian Dennehy and Eat Your Oatmeal or You Get Diabetes, Wilford Brimley. 
um, Steve Gutenberg, all those old school actors and actresses. I don't know. I used to see this one tons of tons of times on uh, HBO back in the day when it was first running on HBO. But uh, just seeing it on a, just a decent uh, transfer here on DVD was a pretty good experience. And uh, oddly enough, it was produced by Richard Zanuck, who I you know may he rest in peace. I think he just passed away this week too. So. He's done a ton of good films with a ton of good directors and actors. So anyway, Cocoon. Enjoyed that one. Here's one that I didn't think I was going to like, but I did. Three bucks. It is The Revenge of Frankenstein. Hammer classic from back in the day with Peter Cushing. Really enjoyed this film. Uh, just cheese. Total pasteurized grade A cheese. I mean, it was just great. Enjoyed that film. This is a guilty pleasure, guys. Elvis, Jailhouse Rock. Three bucks. I'm kind of a back burner. You know when you put the pot on the back burner, you got it simmering back there, and you go back and sniff of it every once in a while, but it's not your main course. That's Elvis Films. I have a soft spot in the heart for Elvis Films. I had to get it. Here's one that the cover art looks atrocious, and I, I got it because it was just so so bad looking. I had to get it. It's called Gun with uh, 50 Cent Jackson and Val Kilmer. What a duo. I'm telling you, this is it. The movie, I haven't watched the whole thing. I watched half of it yesterday. And i got to say, it's actually better than I thought it would be. Think about lower-budget crime thriller drama movies like uh, Narc with uh, Ray Liotta and uh, Jason Patrick. It's sort of like that in a way, but not really. Kind of a cheaper version of that. But Val Kilmer is actually kind of enjoyable in this movie. You know, he's doing a lot of cheap stuff nowadays, and he's just kind of taking the jobs and... I don't know what happened to that guy. I mean, he was Batman for Christ's sake. He was Batman. He was in Top Gun. He was he was uh, Iceman. Anyway, sorry. Bangkok Dangerous, two disc special edition, three bucks. I actually enjoyed this movie. A lot of people crapped all over. This is the one with the digital copy in it. Don't know if the digital copy is still available. You know, some of those kind of have dates on the age out and stuff like that. But uh, Nicholas Cage, I didn't think play a too bad of a hitman role in this movie. You know, he's usually way over the top or not giving us his all, uh, a la <clears throat> Wicker Man remake, anyway. But uh, sometimes he's so over the top and so bad, he's good. So Nick Cage, I'm, a, I'm still kind of a back burner Nick Cage fan. So anyway, Bangkok, Bangkok Dangerous, this one should have a lot of behind the scenes I haven't seen. So good action flick, if anything. Here's one that I was kind of waiting around to get on Blu-ray, and I probably still will get on Blu-ray one day. It's Speed 2 Disc Special Edition, 3 bucks. I got this mainly because I want to see all the special features on it, and it was cheap, and this will hold me over time to get the Blu-ray. Um, commentaries, got tons of special features on Disc 2. Yonde Bont's, uh, I think, first main foray in the action, of course, with, about the bus with the uh, time bomb on it. Anyway, get them while the getting's good, guys. They have plenty of these over there. Um, they have quite a few of these, too. I'm a comic book movie fan. I'll get them if they're dirt cheap, but... A lot of times I don't like to pay a whole lot of money for them. This is the second Fantastic Four movie, Rise of the Silver Surfer. I got this because I kind of actually like the Silver Surfer character in the movie, who's oddly enough voiced by Lawrence Fishburne, I think. But uh, I don't know. I don't think they're going to make any more of these Fantastic Four movies because they're not. Re they don't really hold a whole. They don't hold real close to the comics in these. But Silver Surfer was pretty cool. I thought. Here's one I didn't have in my horror collection, but. I don't know why. I usually don't go for these uh, snapper case ones, but it's The Exorcist 3, William, Powder, William Peter Blatty, excuse me, uh, starring G George, bleh, I can't talk today, George C. Scott. Um, and I think it's got a small role by Brad Dorif in this movie, too. I haven't seen it in a long time. This was all the rave in the early 90s. I think this came out in 1990. Don't quote me on that, but uh, it, I remember it coming out on home video, and everybody was like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Really, all it did was spur an interest in the original film, in my opinion. Everybody went back and watched the original a lot. But this one's not the greatest Exorcist film, obviously, but uh, probably not the worst, I'd say. Here's one I haven't seen since I was a teenager. Bright Lights, Big City, Michael J. Fox, Kiefer Sutherland, and, uh, oh, what's her name, Phoebe Cates. This is supposedly a special edition. However, it's only sporting two commentaries and a, a couple of featurettes, like two featurettes, so... I don't know. Don't really remember too much about this movie. I know it's he's like a, a farm boy or something that comes to the big city and he gets involved in drugs or something. 
It'll be interesting to go back and revisit that one. Speaking of Nick Cage a little while ago, here's one I just remember being a totally crappy movie. This is a terrible movie from my memory. But just like with Cocoon, I'm hoping that watching it again will make it better. That usually doesn't work, but I'm going to try it anyway. Vampire's Kiss. <laughs> this <laughs> Look at that cover art. I mean, that is like, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Cage is a, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Anyways, uh, Nicolas Cage, no real special features. Got a commentary by Cage and the director, but uh, I remember not really liking this movie, but it was cheap. I've grown up now, guys, and it's time to revisit. So I'm going to check it out. Here's one that I kind of moderately liked in the day, and I'm hoping it'll still hold up. It's Married to the Mob with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, Matthew Modine, and Dean Stockwell. It's oddly enough got a supporting role from uh, Gary Clark, who's uh, the big guy Steel from Day of the Dead, George Romero's Day of the Dead. Sorry, that's the horror nerd in me coming out. But uh, he's actually, I think he's like a hitman or a thug in this movie too. So a lot of good supporting actors and actresses. I remember it being real zany, kind of. It might be good for a laugh. Guys, that has been your Big Lots deals for this week. Take care, and I'll catch you next time. Rock on. Bye.